The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. Uh, missed you yesterday. Thank you for our man Basil Chapman fill in. I'm jumping around a bit, but I'm excited to do the program this morning, folks. Where do we pick things up? Positive territory. We have the S&Ps right now sitting right at about 4,800 on the dot with trading. I mean, how about the monthly for a moment? Right, I kick things off on a monthly basis, and we have the S and P's right now trading at forty-seven ninety-nine. And boy, this monthly chart is something else. But let's zoom in on the action this morning. You have the S and P's hitting about forty-eight hundred yesterday. Overnight, you drift higher. You see a little bit of a sell-off yesterday in the close. We get above yesterday's high briefly. We're trading at forty-seven ninety-nine right now on the S and P's. Forty-eight oh four was the high as of yesterday. How about the Nasdaq one hundred? Man, had a little bit of pullback on Apple yesterday. We'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. But boy, uh, I think it was Google charging higher yesterday to my producer right as we came on the air there i'm not sure if you turned something up but my feedback is just ramped up where i'm hearing a lot of static in the blankness um and you jammed up my audio at the end whatever you did there um if you could take a look at that okay so we have google shares look at that acceleration yesterday from 134 to 138 you're sitting at 137.64 right now we're a little bit higher give me one second then Yeah, forgive me. I'll get these audios together in one second, folks. That's not doing it. Okay, we'll get it figured out. Uh, nonetheless, we get the NASDAQ 100 up by 60 and the Dow up by 56, 37,734. We hit uh, basically almost right up the highs that we saw last Friday. And you got the Russell this morning up by 15 at 2,020. Crude trading up about 31 cents right now. Crude. 73.12. We hit 74.61 yesterday. How about that gold contract, folks? Gold up $3 right now at 2044 Off of the hose highs of this week of 2062 If you haven't checked out the gold report, folks, an absolutely great time to do it without a doubt. You jump over to notes and bonds. The 10-year, just chopping around at these relative highs, right? We're sitting at 112.15 right now. On a relative basis, you put it back to a daily. Yeah, we're just sitting at the 618 of that entire move. Fibonacci's, man, they run everything. Uh, the 10 year, 112.15 right now. You're up by seven ticks. We're sitting at that 618. You know, maybe you get a little bit of a consolidation here. Boy, it has been quite a run from 105.10 about to 112.15. You're talking about seven full points from where we were two months ago. October 20th, folks. It's December 19th. You got six days until Christmas next Monday. You got it done? You ready? You better be. Uh, there's your tenure. We jump over to the dollar index. As we have yields pulling back, you got the dollar index pulling back as well. Down again, the dollar off 24 pennies at 102.32. We take a little bit of a bigger picture on the dollar index. And how remarkable is this, right? I mean, probably one of the more remarkable stories. Now, listen, the dollar factors in everything, okay, in terms of our rate structure versus the rate structure for every commodity, uh, excuse me, every currency within it. But what you have is that you are sitting at the same price point that we started the year off with. And in the context of where we are on the 10-year jumping around, Pretty interesting that you're right back to where we were at the beginning of the year, right? Pretty remarkable in terms of the volatility we've had, where we are, where we started, uh, and we're right back there. You jump over to the volatility index this morning, the VIX, trading at 12.51. Put this back to a little 15-minute chart for a little context. Yeah, slightly elevated off of the lows of last week when we got an 11 handle, but we're sitting at 12.51 as we come into very little volatility. Coming into Christmas, coming into that Santa Claus rally. End of the year, and I don't think anything gets in the way of this market before the end of the year, man. 
even all-time highs. So you got the S&P futures right now sitting at 47.9975. 4808 is the mark on the futures for the all-time high right when we kicked off 2022. And man, you talk about an acceleration, man, from 4100 and change and you're talking about on October the week of October 10th, uh 20th, excuse me, 28th. And just like that, man, we're pushing all-time highs. You jump over the Dow for some context. Dow futures trading 37,738, well above the all-time highs that you made. NASDAQ 100 sitting all-time highs, making them again 19,961 right now. I mean, how crazy is it, man? You want to see something really bonkers, okay? And we all know it. And you got to go back more than three years now, which is remarkable. I used to like to pull up a three-year weekly for some context on a bigger, longer-term picture. The NASDAQ 100 was at a 6,600 handle, the COVID lows. Now, listen, you couldn't cherry-pick the COVID lows, okay? But I remember on a longer-term basis, man, if you had cash and that market traded from almost 10,000 down to 6,600 – yeah, you've now gained more than 10,000 points yet again as we push over those all-time highs. Just video game style numbers, as they would say. All right, let's jump around. We'll kick it off with Apple, the big dog. I mean, does this get more parabolic, man? Uh, they're the biggest company in the world. Now let's take this line off here. Whoops. Let's move that one. Let's move that one for some clarity. Apple was already on a tear when you came into COVID. This thing started 2019 off at 35 bucks. You drive up to 145. Yeah, look at this. Apple and COVID was at 53 bucks. You've quadrupled your money. Even if you bought Apple at the beginning of COVID, two and a half times your money. Just absolutely remarkable. Uh, but Apple just made all time highs. That's on a monthly basis. We put it back to a daily for some context. You just got above that number. We're backing off a bit this morning. We are higher. There's your five-minute chart, and I wanted to zoom in on the last two days. Yesterday, you see the drive from 196 to below 195. We're back to 196.41, and we jump around. And, yeah, they're talking about the Apple Watch. I was reading this one last night. So Apple is racing to tweak the software ahead of the looming U.S. watch ban. This one happens Thursday, man. So they're going to stop selling these watches on their website as of Thursday. They're going to um, – so it's a ban imposed by – the International Trade Commission, it has to do with a company, Massimo, okay? They could settle with them. They're preferring not to take that route. And they are barred in certain countries over legal disputes, and this one is a big one. They plan on stop selling the prohibited watches on its website on Thursday. They're going to sell them from their 270 brick-and-mortar outlets by Christmas Eve. Yeah, so the Series 9 and the Ultra 2, the lower-end SE watch is still going to be available. And what this has to do with is the blood oxygen level and the algorithms that they're using to measure them. And so what do they have happening? They're trying to get a software fix going. And we'll see if they make it happen. Um, but not the easiest thing to do when you think about it, right, in terms of that was a big thing, getting the blood oxygen level within the iWatch. I have an iWatch, folks. I love it. It's absolutely awesome. Uh, you know, I'm into tracking steps. I like to keep track of steps, all that good stuff. And it it is pretty cool. And um, interesting, something like that could be such a game changer. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll be coming back. We'll be talking to our man Kevin Hicks from TD Ameritrade Thicker Swim. We'll be right back after the break. Stay tuned. Tigers, tis the season for leveling up your trading skills. Basil Chapman is happy to offer all opening call subscribers a free subscriber webinar Wednesday, December 20th, 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern. Basil Chapman will be discussing major sectors and stocks that are coming off their lows in order to prepare your portfolio for 2024. This is a free webinar for all opening call subscribers. If you are not yet a subscriber, visit the front page of TFNN.com today to secure your spot for Wednesday, December 20th. TFNN, educating investors. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, 
Educating Investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We solved the audio problem. Um, I got it fixed on my own, not my producer, Al, but he helped me work through it. So thanks, Al. Appreciate it as always, pal. Uh, okay. We got the market in positive territory, man. I mean, what stops this market coming in the holidays, right? So we come into, just to recap where we are on the week, it is Tuesday. I know you guys all know this, and girls. We got six days until Christmas. Friday's going to be a ghost town for all intents and purposes. We have Christmas on Monday. You got New Year's Eve after that. As in everyone's gone on vacation pretty soon, folks. And we're just not going to get the type of market-moving, economic-type numbers that can really hamper this acceleration and you're seeing it in yields play out for sure now what do we have the yield sitting at right now we're talking about a yield in the 10-year you ready 3.92 3.92 what happened to five what happened to the days of five percent now in context you're still getting almost four percent on your money over a 10-year basis folks we haven't seen even those types of levels in a while i'm going to give you some context here before we jump around Here's your 10-year. Now, you put this back on a longer-term chart, okay? And yes, we are off of the lows, okay, which brings yields down. But folks, you are still getting in at 2008 prices. We lived in very extraordinary times from the years 2008 to 2021, 22, 23. Call it what you want, right? Money was free. Capital was free. Not sure we're going back to those days. So if we're not going back to those days, where's the point that this could go? Well, we're not going back to those days as in I don't think you're going to see the tenure up to 134, 140 unless something breaks as we have conversations with occasionally. But what is important to note here is that you could get back into a range of at least getting up to 117, maybe 120, something like that, right? Yield's still not bad at 4%. There is room to go, man. The Fed has not even cut yet. Going to be interesting to see how this market reacts as we go forward. The Fed has not even cut. March getting a lot of attention, rightfully so, but we'll see where we go from there, right? All right, what do we got going on? Let's jump through the headlines as we kick things off. We talked about Apple, and yeah, how about that iPhone, As um, excuse me, the iWatch? 
17 billion dollars a year think about that man uh i would love the breakdown i if i had the time i would do it in terms of how many companies take in 17 billion dollars a year in revenue that's just the iWatch, and i'm telling you it is a phenomenal product i love it uh, nonetheless, they're dealing with some real problems here. The blood oxygen feature was first added to the Apple Watch in 2000 with the Series 6 model. At that time, COVID was raging, um, and some doctors used blood oxygen levels to assess the impact of the virus on the patient's ability to breathe, and it can monitor a person's level throughout the day. You know what I do love, and this is the cool part about the iWatch, man, is that you can see trends that you never would have been able to see otherwise. For instance, your resting heart rate. Okay, that's something that I notice when I'm really being active, when I'm working out a lot, when I'm doing a lot of cardio, whether I'm just walking around with Tommy, doing a lot of stuff, uh, getting out and doing some jogging maybe in some of that Florida heat, I could actually see the resting heart rate. When I'm working out a lot, it comes down more. When I'm not working out, I've seen it rise a bit. Those types of things I think are going to become much more common as technology picks up and it can track your health and fitness. So nonetheless, Apple dealing with some woes. Uh, if you want that watch before they have to get it out of there, excuse me. Well, you have until Thursday online and you got till December 24th in stores to purchase that watch. Let's talk a little housing. Housing starts unexpectedly rise to a six month high. Construction of new houses jumped almost 15 percent in November. Guess what? My dad's not the only builder that's a little excited about the rate prospects coming down the line. Starts of single-family houses rose to the highest since 2022. 14.8%, uh, 1.56 million is the annualized rate. The median forecast was looking for 1.36 million. You know what that means, folks? That's 200,000 extra houses. And what's remarkable is it rose 15% last month, but they weren't looking for a rise at all because a 0 .2, 200,000 increase over 1.36 is about 15%. So the economists were looking for 1.36, which was flat, and residential starts were up 15%, 200,000 extra houses, not 1.36, 1.56 percentage wise. It's just bonkers. In terms of a beat, construction of single family houses jumped 18% to the highest level since April of 2022, while starts for multifamily projects increased 6.9%. Noticeable uptick. We'll see where that goes in terms of where rates go from here. Yeah, all regions reported increases in housing starts in November. 16.3% jump in the south. New construction doubled in the northeast and rose 2.1% in the west and 1.4% in the midwest. So if new construction doubled in the Northeast, is that 100%? This is where percentages and numbers can be deceiving. Do you see how they give us this wrap-up? I mean, it's just something to pay attention to when you're writing. Because that is confusing as heck in terms of what those numbers really detail. In terms of new construction doubled. It was up 16.3% in the South, but it doubled in the Northeast. Is that 100%? It might be. Uh, nonetheless, some big numbers there. What else we got pulled up? Whew. For all of you, oh, come on, I'm logged in. What are you doing to me? What are you doing to me, New York Times? Hold on one second for me. Let me make sure we're logged in here. One moment. Because, yeah, boy, uh, if you're in the Northeast, I hope you're safe. I hope your home is safe. Boy, I was talking to even my mom had her fence down in Braintree. I saw some amazing videos of Sunday River, which I used to ski at in a child. Now, they, um, as a ski at as a child, just destroyed one of the roadways, walked away, um, washed away. And yeah, the wind up there was pretty extreme. We dealt with some of that down in Florida. The storm we had ripped up there. I hope everyone is safe up there because, boy, Mother Nature remains undefeated. Some of the visuals, some of the videos coming out. Yeah, hundreds of thousands of people without power. And that's where you got into some of these areas, man, in terms of looking in Maine. You got Boston, Massachusetts, New Hampshire. And boy, if you're in that area, um, check for wind damage. I hope you're safe out there. And boy, if you 
pull up some videos of that Sunday Sunday River because I remember golf. I remember golfing, golfing. Listen to me, I'm a, I'm a Florida boy now, uh, Florida man. I remember skiing. Oops, I'm doing it again. I'm I'm turning up my own audio here by sitting on my mic. Excuse me. Um, and I'm just getting set up in a new office, folks. I'll have the full setup tomorrow. But I'm making it through a few things. But, yeah, I remember spending some great weekends up there skiing on Sunday River. If you have never taken your kids skiing, folks, even if you're in Florida, try and make it happen. Boy, I used to love skiing as a kid. I could never understand. I'm jumping around a bit. I could never understand. You wake up, right? You're a kid. I'm probably, what, eight years old, nine years old or something. I'm like, we're here to ski. It's 7 in the morning. The slopes are open at 8. Why aren't we getting ready? Why? Dad, why aren't you getting ready to ski first thing? That's why they're here. Well, now I'm a dad. I'm in my 40s, and I understand. You got to start off with a little coffee. You got to ease into the day. Then you hit the slopes. Uh, Sunday River. Hopefully they get that repaired. I'm sure they will. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the open. We'll go over some of the equities moving this morning. TFNN we'll right has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders just visit the front page of tfnn.com currencies commodities and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe which is why it's a great time to try out teddy kegstat's tiger forex report Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps right now as we open the trading day up about six points, trading at 4,800 on the dot. We got about four points away from that all-time high in the futures at 4,804 this morning. NASDAQ 100 
Do we get ourselves a 17,000 handle? We're only about 30 points away. We'll see how the big dogs do. We'll jump around them to them in a moment. You got the Dow right now up by 32 points. The Russell up by 16. How about Bitcoin? Hanging tough at about 43,000 right now. 42,925. You jump around to the commodities. Gold up about $3 at 2,043 right now. You jump over to the gold contract. Come on. Excuse me. Gold at two thousand silver, 24. 21 right now and we jump over to notes and bonds when we're sitting at what almost 3.9 percent right now pretty remarkable how quickly things go 3.9 percent all right let's jump around to some of those fang stocks the magnificent seven are they fang i think fang is out of favor maybe i just got to start going the maga the magnificent seven apple up by 55 pennies, 196.52 we jump over to microsoft shares barely in the positive they rise on the open Microsoft shares up about 21 cents at 372.91. Are you going to get that 17,000? We're 13 points away. Look at this market. You jump over to Google. Google shares charge higher yesterday, extend that today. It's always remarkable when these terms settle anything. The market loves it because you know what the market hates, folks? Uncertainty. Market can price in everything except uncertainty. And when it can't price in uncertainty, it makes you take um, extra risk for that in terms of the value. You you eliminate that uncertainty, the value usually goes up. And guess what? Oh, that's not the one I wanted. Sorry. We wanted this one. A little $700 million payment for anti-competitive behavior. Eh, that'll get your stock going, man. Uh, Google agreed to pay $700 million to allow for greater competition in its Play App Store. Google is going to pay $630 million into a settlement fund for consumers and $70 million into a fund that will be used by states, which will still require a judge's final approval. And this is between August of 2016 and September of 2022. And guess what? Everybody's going to get $2 and may get additional payments. Everyone's going to get at least 2 bucks. Make sure you get your name in there. I mean, it's kind of a joke, right? Uh they're accused of overcharging consumers through unlawful restrictions over the distribution of apps on Android devices and unnecessary fees for in-app transactions. That's always the part that goes along with it. Did not admit any wrongdoing. I don't know how you pay all these for $700 million. I mean, uh, nonetheless, that was, what did we just say, 2016 to 2023. Okay. Just going to give you some quick context here. In 2016... They entered the year, to be fair, they said August. So Google was trading at around, we'll call it 40 bucks. We got 39, we got 38. Google was trading at 40 bucks. Well, we're trading at $140 right now, okay? This company, come on, catch up. Catch up for me. How many shares we got outstanding? Oh, I don't have everything tied together. Excuse me. There's Google. There we go. I mean, you're going to see, and we all know how it works, okay? But the fees are supposed to disincentivize behavior, folks. But in reality, they've just become part of doing business, which is unfortunate. I mean, the whole point of punitive damages, right? Recall this when you're going through school. And we're jumping around a lot today, but it's kind of a little bit slow, man. We're coming into the holidays, right? It's not like we got a ton of economic uh, activity out there. It's not like we have a ton of earnings, okay? So we're jumping around. Punitive damages, fines. They're supposed to disincentivize behavior, right? So a punitive damage is supposed to disincentivize future behavior because otherwise car companies could actually make the calculated car companies. This is the example that in my mind pops out. But any company could make the calculated decision that let's just say, and I remember there was one example. I remember learning about it in school when I first learned about punitive damages. This is how as a kid, man, it is remarkable sometimes. And how does the human brain work where you can just certain moments – of days that are decades ago stick out. I remember learning about punitive damages and I remember going over the example case where it was a car company and I can't recall the specifics, but basically they realized that they had a problem. It was an older car. They realized they had a problem with the car and it was dangerous. And they realized though that if they fixed all the cars, it would cost them X amount of money. But if they just let the cars stay the way they were, 
and paid out all the claims that could result from the damage that was going to incur to people, the harm that was going to get done, it would actually cost them less money to allow all that harm to happen and to pay out those fines and penalties and fees and damages to the people who got hurt than it would to actually make the change. And therefore, punitive damages are to make sure companies know that if you make that calculation and you make that economic decision that you're just going to pay out the damages because it's less expensive than doing what's right and what's required by the law, that they'll come for you for extra charges to disincentivize that in the future. And I feel like there should be something on the financial spectrum that does that because right now, these companies are making decisions that they factor in sometimes some of these things. Now, Google, I just said, went from 40 to 140, okay? They have 12.5 billion shares outstanding, folks, okay? I, I mean, this is going to be – I mean, what do they have to move the, the, the needle to make 700 million? 50 cents, right? 60 cents is all they need to make. Think about that. They theoretically, if they could gain one dollar in value over those seven years, it would be worth it to them to pay a seven hundred million dollar fine because they would add twelve point five billion dollars in market cap. Let me repeat that. If they could gain one dollar in share value, which would increase their market cap. No, it's less than that. My goodness. Yeah. It's five pennies. Jeez, the numbers mean nothing, right? They really do. I got to get my math checked. Look at me. My goodness. Yeah. Sorry for the pause, but that breaks my brain almost in terms of how the example. I want to get the exact number for you here. Yeah, 5.6 cents. <laughs> I mean, crazy. So Google would have needed to increase their share value by five pennies, call it six pennies, to make up that $700 million fine over seven years, and their stock went up $100 over that time. And going up $100 over that time, my goodness, this is where. And what is that, $12.5 billion, $125 billion. Is that right? It sure is. Twelve point five billion. My goodness. One point two trillion dollars. <laughs> Google's market cap has gone up one point two trillion dollars over the years that they were anti competitive and they harmed customers, and they're gonna pay seven hundred million for that. Now, the backdrop of that is there's a lot of competition on that Play Store to a certain degree. You got iTunes out there. Okay, iTunes. You got the Apple Play Store or whatever it is. But remember that when you see those fines, man, because it is the cost of doing business. And hopefully we can eliminate that a little bit going forward. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll talk a little bit of Tesla when we come back. They're going to be paying their workers a little more money. We'll talk some Tesla. Stay tuned. We'll be right back, folks. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. 
for daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got S&P sitting at 4802, just kind of chopping around on the open, right? No real volatility on the open. We charge higher as we come into the opening bell right at 930. You're trading at 4798. We're up by four points, basically, from where you're trading at that price point. NASDAQ 100, we don't quite get there, but within a stone's throw, man, 16,991 within 10 points of that price point in terms of 17,000. Uh, let's see how some of those big dogs are trading. We talked about Apple, up a third of a percent, man. Microsoft. They trade a little bit lower on the open. Google, strong like bull. And let's jump over to Tesla. Tesla shares, they're up by 1.1% today. They popped to 258 yesterday. You give back some of that acceleration. And we're going to get to our Tesla. Come on, where are we? There we are. So Tesla, they're going to raise the pay for hourly Nevada Gigafactory workers in January. A move that could stave off union interest. 10% or higher hourly pay rate increase for some workers at its Nevada battery factory. And yeah, they're working to make sure that uh, the appetite to form a union and push for collecting bargaining might be diminished. They're going to bump hourly workers from 20 to 22 an hour on the low end and from 30.65 to 34.50 on the high end, streamlining some levels. So that several levels of workers making between 26 and 30 an hour is going to be adjusted to 34. 10 percent or greater raise for most hourly workers from 2 to 8.30 an hour their pay. As we all know, though, pay is important. And so are the details that go along with it, though. Many times when these unions get into the battles with companies, it's not over the headline pay. Listen, it's over the headline pay, but the devil is in the details. Right, whether it's what the companies want or whether it's what the workers want in terms of um, everything that goes with it, right? Vacation time, benefits, health care, vacation, all that stuff. Uh, and guess what? You're damn right the UAW is coming for them, man. They just won record contracts. And if you're working for Tesla and you see the auto workers getting it done, you see – UPS driver is going to be making, what, 125 grand a year over five years, over the next five years or something like that. Folks, I know it's a startling number. Run the math on what you need to make to afford a home. And don't be ashamed to argue that workers who work full time in, in experienced positions deserve to make a livable wage. And right now, depending on where you are, and depending how many years you go out into the future, 
$100,000, sound like an old man, is not what it used to be, okay? So remember that. Realize what you have to make to afford a home, to afford a car, to afford what? Health insurance. Uh, we have a massive problem going on right now with home insurance in Florida. We have a massive problem going on with car insurance right now in Florida, okay? Insurance, all that stuff. So you hear those numbers, man, but what I always am amazed about is that We've been so used to low wages for so long and unlivable wages that a company pays somebody a livable wage and it's like, oh man, how are they doing that? Folks, they're just paying people a livable wage. Those UPS drivers deserve to make that kind of money being on the – oh, sorry. Got to turn this one down. I'll get a little better by tomorrow. Um, so I've said my piece but you know, for, a com for, for an employee – who is driving that business forward, and those numbers are going five years into the future at the end of the deals that they just made, okay? They're coming off historic inflation. What can you afford for $125,000? Of course you can live reasonably and live by your means, but you are not rich right now, man. You know, you sign a deal for a home mortgage right now, even at, what, just under 7% with hundred dollars to $125,000 of income, you might be able to pick up a median property. You might. And that's for a high-level, experienced employee that is driving one of the best delivery companies in the world, United Parcel Services. So remember those as you get through it. And I think that you're going to see more companies, employees, think about that. And it's going to be interesting to see where Tesla goes. Tesla's its own animal, though, as we know. You work for Elon Musk. Uh, you better be ready to live and die by the whim of Elon sometimes. All right. We can't quite get there in the NASDAQ just yet. We got within five points, 16,995. Is that where we get to before we get a little bit of a sell-off? We'll see. You got the S&Ps holding up pretty well, 4,803 right now. You get the Dow. Look at that Dow, man. Dow, you might get 38,000 today. We'll see how the day moves forward. We got the 10-year yield sitting at 3.92% right now. We jump around to commodities. Look at that gold contract, man. So what do we got? We got gold up to 2,052. Let's jump around to the dollar index. Yep, it's dropping. The dollar index off 37 pennies, man. Look at this thing. 102.18. You got dollar weakness. You have the 10-year at 3.92%. You have commodities rising, and you have the market sitting at basically all-time highs across the board right now. Quite the Santa Claus rally to come into things. Now, we've seen this happen before in terms of ending a year at highs. We're right back to where this all started, which is just ironic that we're back within four points, within five points, within three points now of where it started. That's when we knew that hikes were coming. This is when we knew that cuts are coming. Where are we going to go? We'll find out. Because remember, the March meeting is when they began to hike in 2022. And two years later is possibly when they're going to begin cutting the March meeting. Um, but, boy, we got some optimism priced into this one, as we all know, at 4803. The one thing you can't underestimate, folks, is the type of profitability, the type of productivity, and the type of margins some of these companies might be able to pull together with the use of AI. You start using ChatGPT, man, and you see how so many tasks are going to be eliminated. It's kind of the same way. I was sending out a bunch of emails this weekend, and you just realize, I mean, imagine even an email. We take it for granted now, right? You can have text. You can have templates for emails. You can copy and paste emails. You can use ChatGPT even to write emails. But before ChatGPT, just think about the way a computer changed the case with emails. It's going to be a similar transition. And think about the, the productivity increases we saw with that technology. Think about the work you can do sitting in front of your computer, how many emails you can send out to customers versus the employees that used to have to sit there and write by hand and process each envelope, stamp it, and send it out. It's going to be similar with ChatGPT, just um, exponentially even more so. Yeah, something to salivate over a bit. All right, we jump around a bit. You know, one article I did see out here on the New York Times, and this one I've read a lot about it because I had Tommy as a you know a young kid. He's kind of out of this now, but I remember reading about this even from the Times. I think they keep writing about this as it keeps surging, and just something to be ahead of, um, aware of. If you do have a young child in the house, right? 
there's a booming business of getting kind of like a tongue tie treatment, okay? That are talking about here. Let me get up to the top for a second. And what it has to do with is that potentially your tongue tightness in terms of being a little bit attached to your mouth. But boy, there are some people profiting off of some tough situations here to the tune of millions of dollars. And it's just something to be aware of as we jump around a little bit of off topic from the market, but important stuff nonetheless. We'll be right back to finish up the show, folks. Tigers, tis the season for leveling up your trading skills. Basil Chapman is happy to offer all opening call subscribers a free subscriber webinar Wednesday, December 20th, 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern. Basil Chapman will be discussing major sectors and stocks that are coming off their lows in order to prepare your portfolio for 2024. This is a free webinar for all opening call subscribers. If you are not yet a subscriber, visit the front page of TFNN.com today to secure your spot for Wednesday, December 20th. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps. Are we going to get it? We got a point. We got a point away. 4807. We got two minutes left in the show, and we'll see if we hit that mark before we get off the air. You got the NASDAQ 100. We're just about at all-time highs on that 17,000 mark as well, up 40 points. You got the Dow up 144 points right now. And how about the Russell? Up 32 
point still well off the all-time highs, but we are breaking above this natural area of resistance in the Russell. That was at about 2,000. We're well above. You have the highs of 2,033. Back in August of last year, we just got above that high. Last week, we're above that high yet again. Um, jumping back to that article, nothing to do with the stock market, folks. But as we wrap up the program, so this is talking about tongue tie surgery, basically in newborns. And the thing they talk about here that's a bummer is that it's an unregulated industry. Okay, many of these are not covered by insurance. And, you know, a lot of women, of course, want to breastfeed. And if they have trouble breastfeeding, it used to be a normal situation because it happens often. And nowadays, even with the age of social media and everything that comes with it, there's even more pressure to breastfeed that comes with it. These tongue tie releases, okay, are up almost a thousand percent between 1997 and 2012 to more than 12,000. You got specialists in 25 states. And the kicker is the pediatricians are not on board with this, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so what they do is you find a dentist, you find a lactation consultant, you maybe come in and the lactation consultant will say you're having trouble breastfeeding, maybe your son's tongue is having some problems with it being tongue-tied, I'll hook you up with a specialist that can do the surgery, they get a kickback from all of that, and um, it's something to be aware of. If you know anybody facing that, just check out the information, because it does happen but it seems like it's on fire. And what else is on fire? We just got it. 4808.75. Basil Chapman's coming up. S&P's at all-time.